Okay, in this these series of videos we've been talking about groundwater, surface water, and watersheds. At this point we've talked about groundwater and surface water and then we're going to finally end up talking about watersheds. So again a real quick review, groundwater, the water that is beneath the surface of the ground, water that seeps down to the ground, uh, we uh, get water out of the ground using wells or from aquifers um, drilling down to the ground. Okay, then we have going on here, you'll see that we have surface water. We said that surface water is the water that runs across the surface. Uh, it can be rivers, lakes, streams, oceans, and wetlands, but it's the water that's on top of the ground, not necessarily the water that's underneath the ground. And uh, surface water uh, causes all sorts of surface runoff, uh, erosion, moving particles of sand. Okay, so we have the erosion where the, the water running through creeks and rivers and across the ground picks up soil and sediment and moves those to other places where they deposit those, deposition. Um, we said that uh, deltas were an example of where um, soil and silt is deposited at the mouth of rivers. And then we talked about the process of erosion and, and how humans impact the erosion process. When we take away plants, uh, we take away their, their roots, uh, we don't leave anything for the soil to be held in place, so that increases erosion, clear cutting, increasing erosion. And the importance of having vegetation and plants to limit erosion, uh, slow down runoff, and so forth. Okay, so let's talk about watersheds. Now, a watershed. Okay, a watershed is it's an, an area of land, okay? So it's an area of land uh, where water drains, okay? It's an area of land where water drains. Um, so in this area, we have the, the watershed and all the area and all the water that eventually drains into Lake Levon, okay? So uh, Lake Levon is where most of our water, when it runs off, it eventually goes to. And Lake Levon several miles over here to the east. Um, but this whole area, a lot of this north, uh, north Dallas area, the water runs off. And when it runs off, it runs on the, to Lake Levon for us. Okay, there's other lakes in this area that it may run into. But kind of in the Collin County area, most of the water, when it rains, Okay, if it does not get absorbed into the ground, it runs off into creeks and rivers and eventually Lake Levon. Okay, so here's below is an example of a watershed. So if you could imagine this being um, Allen, okay, and being McKinney, uh, Fairview, the areas around here, okay, uh, even going up a little bit further north. Um, if you, so if you had the various towns and when it rains, the water comes down Okay, and it hits the ground and then it starts, as you can see by these arrows, it runs downhill. Okay, gravity is pulling water downhill. Um, water is going to take the path of least resistance as it runs downhill and eventually goes into these creeks. And smaller creeks uh, come together to form larger creeks. And larger creeks come together and eventually flow into lakes. So if you can imagine this being our area, maybe this is Lake Levon down here and all the water hitting the ground, going to the low-lying areas and running off, okay? So it brought, so this whole particular area is what we call a watershed. The whole area. So if you can imagine, you have the Collin County watershed. So that is just the system of pathways of rivers and streams that the water takes to run downhill and collect, okay? And eventually the water even goes out of Lake Levon and drains into other rivers eventually if we're talking about the Mississippi River, the vast majority of the rivers are going into the Mississippi River and flowing into the Gulf of Mexico and so forth. All right. So, watershed's pretty simple, you know, pretty simple to understand. It's just, again, that drainage area where the water goes, where it runs across the ground and where it goes. Um, but there's a lot of things that we as humans and how we complicate this whole process because we as humans we do lots of things we add fertilizer uh, to our yards okay um, we have oil from our cars do being deposited onto driveways and, and roads and whenever the water it rains and water hits the ground just like it picks up sediments and soil it also picks up these fertilizers it picks up these oils it picks up all these contaminants that we as people leave on the ground um, 
you know, we have some examples down here. Fertilizing your lawn, pet waste, okay? Got your guard, your, the dog that goes to the bathroom and it's not picked up, okay? That pet waste is going to, if it rains hard, it's gonna wash off, okay, your yard, okay? Even not, not, even not all of it, but some of it's gonna wash off your yard and go into the sewer system, into the watershed. Um, so all these, content, all these things, they, they contribute and they're, they're put into the water and you start to get an imbalance. And when you get an imbalance, you get lots of nitri nitrogens, okay, from these waste products, and you start to get more algae that starts to grow. Algae is like a plant, and algae feeds off these nitrogens and, and these byproducts of the, the waste that gets into the water. Um, and it starts to, to, to mess up the whole, the whole cycle. It starts to contaminate and pollute our water. And uh, that is all done by, okay, uh, by putting that water on the ground, getting that water into our watershed, and then when it gets into our watershed, it gets into our systems or our, our streams, and then you start to have this imbalance. Okay, the balance of nature is thrown off. Okay, the balance of nature is thrown off. Now, here's an example of uh, an issue when we get too many waste products, fertilizers, and other things, nitrogens, and and stuff into our water and into our watershed. Um, this picture here on the left, uh, you can see this, oops, mess that up. Picture on here on the left, you can see that right here, um, that is actually water, okay? Uh, this right here is a bridge going over a creek and we have all of this green algae that has just exploded, it's grown like crazy because you know, the green algae loves the stuff. Okay, the green algae loves all those waste products and those nitrogens and, and so forth that are in the water and it explodes. We call this a bloom, okay? A bloom of algae. And in this picture, the algae has grown so much that it covers the entire surface of the water. You can't even see the water. So some people might be saying, well, what's so bad about that? Well, what's happening to all the organisms underneath that water? Okay, you've got all those organisms, you got fish, you got other plants, uh, those other plants, water plants are being choked out because they can't get sunlight for photosynthesis. They're dying. Uh, when they start to die, they start to rot and decompose and add more uh, ammonia and different things to the water. That causes the animal population to start to die. It just throws everything off and you just got this giant soupy waste product mess. The picture over here on the left, okay, this is uh, what we call red tide, okay? All this red is a red algae, okay? A red algae, and again, it's an indicator that there is an imbalance in nature, okay? There's, there's all sorts of pollution in the water, and this algae thriving off these nitrogens and other pollutant products uh, in the water, and is, is another algae bloom Okay, and has uh, filled up this, this bay here. And again, the same process. What's happening to all of the plants and animals underneath that? And when you have this explosion, it's also using up the good stuff. I mean, it's also it's taking in the bad stuff, but it's also using up a lot of the good stuff and not leaving it there for the other plants and animals. Again, creating this imbalance, other plants and animals start to die. Then you start having just all sorts of problems. Okay, get off of here, I'm trying to. All right, going to the next slide. So, whenever we have heavy rain, okay, you got heavy rain, just like when you have all that water running off and moving sediment and erosion, you got the same thing, you got heavy rain, it's transporting these pesticides, okay? Pesticides are, are things that kill uh, insects that you put on crops. Um, antifreeze, which is stuff you put in your car that might have leaked on the ground, motor oil, paints, um, some people just don't keep their area very clean and maybe they got old, old paints outside in, in rusty paint buckets and that paint and all the stuff in that paint leaking out. Um, it could be household cleaners, um, all sorts of things that might be outside and when it rains heavy and if people are not keeping their house and their area clean and leaving these things outside, those things have the opportunity to leak and, and, and contaminate uh, the ground and the water that's on the ground and that water again running off. Okay, so that water enters waterways and ultimately contaminates our streams and rivers. And, you know, you've got so many people living in this area, okay, that just builds and builds and builds. And it's a very important to keep your area clean 
and not letting these things get into the water. Because ultimately, who's that going to come back to? You. You need to drink that water just as much as the plants and animals need to drink that water. And we can do our best to purify that water, but we got to keep our area clean so we don't have to work so hard to purify that water and also so that we don't get that back in ourselves. Okay, so we really try to monitor our watersheds. We try to, uh, to, to manage, okay? We try to keep track of things that are going on by repairing and cleaning up. Uh, maybe you got damaged cars, you know, repairing those cars so they don't leak the oil on the ground. Cleaning up if there is an oil spill, okay? Uh, we also try to do things to limit erosion by planting vegetation. Okay, again, we talked about this, uh, slowing down the runoff. If we can slow down the runoff, not as many things as picked up. We also talked about how vegetation will absorb a lot of contaminants. So if we build new houses, that we plant new trees and plant grasses and shrubs to try to absorb those contaminants and also slow down the runoff. Okay, so that is it for these videos. And talking about surface water, groundwater, and watershed. Um, if we need to, go back and rewind and, and watch the video segments over again to make sure you have all the information um, and make sure that you have your notes complete.